Twelve years is quite a chunk of time. 105,120 hours. They say that if you want to become a real master at whatever you're passionate about, it takes 10,000 hours. That may seem like a lot, but it's less than 10% of 12 years. In my life as a musician, I've spent a few tens of thousands of hours in solitary pursuit of music in order that I might arrive at something meaningful to share with others, whether by using my fingers at the piano, a baton in front of an orchestra or choir, or a keyboard and mouse composing. Today, if I could ask you to ponder just one question as you look forwards and backward at this crossroads, it would be this. Where will you be in 12 years? What kind of person will you be? What kind of life will you have? Will you have grown in the next dozen years as you have in the past dozen? What do you aspire to be? Take a moment to picture your former self at age six, starting first grade. It probably feels like yesterday and what a journey it's been. Peering 12 years into the future is hard. What about five years or just three? No matter what your age, even a year or two from now, you'll look back at who you are right now and see a kid. That's the speed of change and growth. Every morning I think, how can I grow today? What weakness can I turn into strength with a little bit of time and effort? How can I make every moment of the gift of today really count? If the current unusual times teach us something, it's that we keep going no matter what. We adapt, we create new pathways, we forge ways to overcome or go around. We rewire our realities and our connections. Life throws us adversity and we see it as opportunity. I suppose that's because humans are artists by nature. The great artists and philosophers from across time and civilization seem to be in agreement with Socrates. To know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. But what does that even mean? It's an elusive, impossible quest because even if you were to truly know yourself today, by tomorrow, like a river, you will have changed again. I'm a composer, and to compose, whether music or words, is to exist in the world of the possible. Your English teacher says to write about what you know. But when you create, sometimes you have to go beyond yourself, open up new horizons. At the moment of creation, the question is, what's beyond what I love and know? What's beyond the familiar? Life is an adventure. Explore your outer banks. You might be surprised how what at first feels foreign will become home. Your life is both miraculous and nothing less than your own creation. It belongs to no other. You alone create your destiny. You alone are responsible for everything you choose to do and become. To know yourself, create yourself. Dream up your Sistine Chapel and start painting. A teacher once gave me a piece of advice that attached itself to me. Never let yourself be limited by the expectations of others. Others would make you smaller than you are. Some, often those who are closest to you and should know you best, might not believe that you can achieve your dream. Don't let them diminish you. You are bigger than they or even you yet know. There is a serendipitous flip side to the coin. As you search out your place in the world among all the possible versions of you, keep asking, what can I do with my life that will bring value to other people's lives? How can I use my talents and skills and time and effort to serve others? Most often what might be called success in life is finding where your innermost desires and your greatest potential to serve others overlap. One thing is certain, 
over the course of your life, with the ever-accelerating rate of change in the world, you will need to reinvent, recreate yourself many, many times over. I suppose, though, that's not unlike what you've already accomplished every year until now. So today, we salute you. Never stop being curious. Never stop learning and changing. Never stop creating. And most importantly, never stop serving. Thank you.